Hi, and welcome to the Google Sheets tutorial on how to use the subtotal function. My name is John Flatt, and I'll be doing this tutorial today. We're going to cover um, not only how to use it, but the different ways and the why you would use the subtotal function. To some people um, up front, the subtotal function may appear to be quite similar to the sum function, um, but that's just one of its capacities. In fact, it can be quite complex and versatile. It's not the easiest function to use necessarily, but it's not the most complex either. Understanding a few basic rules of how it's put together allow you to use it very functional and when used at a high level can really um, step up any report and make it much more complex and uh, versatile throughout it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the situation and discuss why we wouldn't use the basic sum function in this situation. So what we're looking to do is we're looking at these average sale numbers, the projected versus the actual, we're looking for the differences um, throughout the quarters. So one way to do this um, is to, let's see here, we're going to do sum and then we'll do these here. So if we were to do that, we can just copy and paste that all the way down. So we do that there, and we create, we get our, each of our quarter totals. And then if we were to come in here and do sum, and then run through here, the issue we get is actually that this is 1,480. And I know from having run it before that we're actually looking for a number in the 700s. So there's obviously an issue here, and the issue can be pretty pretty clearly you know, stated and obvious. It's actually taking these quarterly totals as well. It's adding them in as if they were just another data piece, which they're not, they're the totals. So we need to change that. And the way we can do that, and this is where the subtotal function comes in handy. So the subtotal function is made up of a two part or two argument syntax. So we go equals subtotal in parentheses, and then we're going to I'll pull up this info the formula preview. So we look at it and it says function code and then range one and then it's expandable range two, etc. etc. So we need to understand the function code. The best way to understand the function code, if you don't have it in front of you already, or um, in a table somewhere for you to reference out to, you can click this learn more button here. This learn more button will pull up the Google Help section, and this Google Help section is great. It actually just gives them all to you right here. So one is average, two is count, et cetera, et cetera. So nine is sum. So for this scenario, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and put nine, and then we're gonna put the range. So we're doing a sum function there. Again, we will copy and paste down here. And then we have the sum of each of the quarter totals there. But where it comes into handy is in this one, when you've used it in the ones above, and then we go ahead and use it again. Oops, one more there. So we're gonna do it again, we're gonna do nine again, comma, and we're gonna select this whole range. And now we'll see it's 740, and that's the number I came up with. That's the number that was supposed to be, and what would be expected to be. So then we can apply this same function over here. Yep, so that's in there, and then we can take this one here, we complete it through. So now our sum our subtotal function is in there. Now again, there's the other there's the other possible function codes that you can use and we'll actually address kind of one of the cool ways you can use that um, in a little bit but just to recap a bit anytime this function sees subtotals above it knows to remove those from its equation one additional thing that you can note and it says right here in this section here but it's something you'll see uh, in other places but hidden values can be skipped for any of these codes by predict Prepending 10 to the single digit codes or 1 to the two digit codes. Example 102 for count while skipping hidden cells and 110 for var while doing so. 
So essentially you just make them 100. So 101, 110, 111, 106. And that takes them and it gives you the same functions but while skipping hidden rows. So let's actually go into one of the ways that this can be very um, beneficial to, to you. Uh, we're going to look at another data set for this. And this data set, we have a list of purchases throughout a time period, um, December through February. And we need to get the information from here that, you know, the cost, the total value, and the return on that so far. Um, to do this, we need to build a table that's going to have the information. So I wanted to kind of run through different ways of doing this. A lot of people would do the sum function, which is a great function. Um, obviously, it serves a purpose, but it's it's not very complex. So we will show you kind of some of its situation here. So I was going to do this for each of these cells as well. So we're getting our numbers, we're just copy and pasting those, they automatically correct to the right um, cells there. Now in order to do, to do it with a filtered, um, so the, the thing about it, why I put here filtered, is anytime you're using a subtotal function, it automatically filters your results based on the filter applied. So you see this green square here with these arrows up here, these drop downs. This is a data filter and it can be added by highlighting the range that you want going up to data and turn on turn off filter right here so I turned that on a bit ago so now that's on it's not filtering anything yet but these give me the ability to filter so when we filter this we also want to see the filtered so for example we want to see when what February numbers were. So we can clear all here, select February, go to OK, and we see that the sum is the exact same as it was before. It hasn't changed. However, if we instead, we'll go back here, instead we want to enter what we were working with earlier. So we're going to go equals subtotal 9, and then we're going to do this range here, same range we have before. And we'll see it's exactly the same. Now, here's where it serves its purpose. Select February. Now, what you're seeing is just the total here. It's a subtotal function, as I say here, and it's showing just the amount in this portion here and the, on, in the filtered results. So if you then come in here and you change this to January and uncheck February, you're going to now have a different set of results and a different. So that gives it the ability to filter based on your views, which is a really great function. Now, another thing that we were just discussing is how to make it ignore hidden rows. So this is quite simple as well. So it's going to be like we've been doing equals subtotal nine for sum. But like I said earlier, we want to add it, make it 109. So it's sum while ignoring. And then it's going to be the same range we were using earlier. So that would be 4 through 48. And F4 through F48. So now you see we haven't hidden any cells yet, so any rows. So it's the same as the subtotal. Now you see the difference. Let's see. Okay, well, say we look at these two and we're like, oh, these are outliers. We really don't want these factoring into our numbers. But we don't want to delete them because they're good data to have. So we hide those rows for the report. And now all of a sudden this subtotal is stepped down. It's actually gone down. It's removed those. And so you're no longer seeing those. So those three are set up that way. And we can do the same exact thing. Take that over here. Take it over here as well. And we have our functions built in. So now we can adjust. We can hide some more cells, get a new number, we can show these cells, we can select all here while keeping some hidden cells, and so we have different results showing up. So that's a really good functional tool. So that concludes how to use the subtotal function in Google Sheets. Um, this is really just a part one. If you continue on to part two, I will show you kind of the next level, um, the way you can incorporate this specifically into a report.